done. Today we are making some delicious creamy peanut butter mousse. Peanuts are inflammatory for some people. So if that's you, I highly recommend that you avoid this recipe. Um, also, obviously, if you have peanut allergy, that wouldn't be good. But for those of you who don't find peanuts inflammatory, um, this is a lovely recipe for a creamy peanut butter mousse. So what I have in here is uh, Greek yogurt. And obviously your goal with Greek yogurt is to buy, to find the one with the lowest sugar, the lowest carbs, and and the, the, a good ratio of protein and fats, whatever that means to you. Typically that means buying whole Greek yogurt, looking for the one with the lowest sugar. So that's what I have here. I am going to add to that peanut butter. You will find this a lot easier if you leave your peanut butter out of the fridge overnight. Or the other way you can do it if you forget that or that you don't want to do that. Um, if you run the sink with some hot water and stand your jar of peanut butter in to kind of liquefy it a bit, this whole step will go a lot easier. So I've got my softened peanut butter and I've got my yogurt and I'm going to mix that in. This will be a good, this will be arm day for at least one of your arms. And you'll see now why I say that this all goes a lot easier if your peanut butter has been out of the fridge or you've warmed it up a little in the jar because it does get pretty thick. So give that a good beat. And that's actually one of the reasons why I like to use these bowls. I will link below. It's a melamine bowl, so not plastic, so that's good. But it's got a handle on it, which means that I can get a really good grip when I'm doing some beating. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our protein. In this instance I'm using egg white powder and also baking soda. Actually I'm just going to make sure that this baking soda has no lumps in. And you want to measure the baking soda very carefully. Do not put in one cell more than the amount the recipe asks for, otherwise your mousse will taste like soap. And nobody likes mousse that tastes like soap. So what I did there was I just smashed the lumps out of the baking soda before I put it in. So that's going to go in. And then I have my salt and I am gonna mix that all in it's getting quite dry at this point so hang in there it's more doughy you want to mix that all in of course if you have a a hand mixer it will be quicker or you can simply do it by hand it doesn't really make any difference for this recipe but you just want to keep working that until all of that is worked in now um, all the quantities and the written instructions for this 
are up on my blog. It's a free recipe, so just click in the link below to take you straight there. So you don't have to take notes. While we're doing this, you can simply click up onto the blog and get all those ingredients, quantities, and the method and tips and all the things up there. Now, the reason I said vanilla protein powder, actually in the recipe, or egg white powder. Whey powder is used by a lot of people. However, quite a few people have a, a response to whey powder in that it spikes their insulin. So I prefer to always use egg white powder, which is just dried egg white, nothing else, it just has one ingredient. So I prefer to use egg white powder and not whey powder so that my recipes are accessible to those who cannot, who find whey either inflammatory or it makes them gain weight because of the insulin response. If that's not you and if you have a clean whey powder that you love, you can absolutely use that instead. You'll see now that by working this, and now I've got all of the powder worked in, you'll see that it's gone back to, it's not hard and doughy anymore. It's getting back to a softer consistency. So I've completely worked in all of that. And now, over here, I have three egg whites, and I'm gonna add to that some cream of tartar. Everything will be linked below so that you can find it easily, order it easily. And I'm going to whip this on high speed. jump cut in there because I wanted you to see about how long it takes to go from zero to stiff peaks in, in real time because I know some of you get anxious about egg whites so this is what we call a stiff peak I don't know if you can see that there's actually the I mean you can see all the the shape from the wrist is still in there and the ultimate test if you want to know is to do that and your egg whites should stay in the bowl if they don't well then clearly that didn't go well so that's what stiff peaks looks like and now we're going to whisk in half of our sweetener
Once that's whisked in, we're going to add the second half. until the egg whites and, and sweetener are stiff and glossy and I hope you can see there that it's stiff I, when I pulled the, the whisk out it leaves all the patterns are still left in there and it's also glossy so stiff and glossy and again that's what stiff and glossy looks like and that's how long it took there were no jump cuts in that piece of video so that should give you a good idea of if you're kind of thinking is it going to happen that's the amount of time it will take you so the reason for the cream of tartar and the reason for putting the sugar in at this point rather than into the peanut butter mix the cream of tartar stabilizes the egg white so cream of tartar helps the egg white to not collapse the, and making, this is essentially a meringue now, adding the sugar to the egg whites further makes it very, very stable. So when we add it to the peanut butter mixture and make it into a mousse, we're not going to have collapsing eggs. We're not gonna have a thin runny mousse. The air that we've whipped into the egg whites is gonna stay a lot better because we use cream of tartar and because we made it to a meringue before we put it in here. You would not have got such a good result if you'd have put the, sh the sweetener in here and just added plain whipped egg whites. The other thing to know is if you have problems whipping egg whites too stiff, if yours just won't whip, the reason is you have got some fat in there. Egg whites will not whip if there is the tiniest speck of fat in there and what typically happens is that you, you accidentally break your yolk when you're separating the eggs. Even the tiniest little speck of yolk gets in there, your egg whites won't whip. So if, you're, if you've tried this recipe before or you've tried another recipe that uses egg whites and your egg whites wouldn't whip, that's why. Your bowl, your whisks have to be spotlessly clean and um, when you're whipping the egg whites, just make sure when you're separating the egg whites, absolutely no yolk. So if you break an egg, I would recommend you just set that aside, put it in a pot and use it for scrambled eggs tomorrow and get a new egg and start again. Because we, it, it, we don't want you to waste all of this because your egg whites won't whip. So the bowl and utensils for egg white whipping have to be scrupulously clean. Okay, so I've got my stiff and glossy, essentially meringue. I am gonna put it into my peanut butter and I am gonna fold. And there is a video, if you go to the playlist on this channel called Cooking Tips and Tricks, you will find a video on folding all about folding where I go into detail of what why which I'm not going to do here if you're new to cooking the cooking tips and tricks playlist will have a lot of little helpful things for you so I'm folding in my meringue
it's easier. The reason I put it in, in two lots is just because it's easier to incorporate in two lots instead of trying to get all of that egg white in in one go. So fold in the first half, put in the second, fold in the second half. Folding always takes a bit of effort. I could beat this, but then my resulting mousse wouldn't be nearly as light and fluffy. So if you need an arm day for your right arm or your left arm if you're left handed, this mousse will give it to you. Give it a good stir. I think that's all folded in now. You'll know it's folded in when there's no white stripes of the, you can see that's perfectly homogenous now, there's no white stripes of the meringue left. So when you get to that point, you can spoon it into your favorite glasses or dishes or whatever you want to serve it in. And there is your creamy peanut butter mousse. Enjoy!